Well, hello and good evening to you. Welcome. This is Ghana Tonight. We are live from Aniyu Sabata, Desawe, Kanda. Also live on TV3, Ghana on Facebook and uh, DSV Channel 279. We're all across the world on 3news.com. I am Alfred Okanse. Tonight, how accurate is the Ecofado Baumia led new protective party government's claim of creating some 2.3 million new jobs since 2017. A data scientist and policy analyst is going to be joining us as we interrogate these job numbers, 2.3 million, as, as consistently claimed by the vice president. It appears some money spent on the All-Africa Games cannot be accounted for, or rather, they cannot be traced as the Minister for Youth and Sports comes under fire to provide further and better particulars of some over $3.6 million. GBC has been talking. The Youth and Sports Ministry has just issued a statement. It's coming in hot on the plate right now. We're getting to it. You're going to see it first here on Ghana Tonight. Stay with us. Today is into the West Africa Senior School Certificate Examination and there are already some matters arising. We're delving into the issues and the suspicions that already Waik is picking up related to some examination of practices and, and attempts to do so and some rogue websites that have also been identified as well. Stay with us. As always, you're an integral part of the conversation. Let's hear from you. The hashtag we're using is Ghana tonight on Facebook and on X. Let's get talking. It's going to be a very interesting conversation tonight. You want to stay with us as always. And uh, let's settle for Ghana Briefs. The National Democratic Congress has maintained that it will not sign the 2024 Peace Pact until the Peace Council ensures that its conditions are met. The party, among other things, wants to see the full implementation of the Ayawasu West Wogon Commission report. We believe that Ayawasu West Wogon happened. There was a commission. There were recommendations. The recommendations have not been implemented so far. Condition number one is that let us see full implementation of the recommendations of Ayawasu West Wogon we want to see initiation of prosecution in respect of the perpetrators of the killings in Techiman Saf, Ablikuma Centra, Banda, and Ododododio. The voter exhibition exercised by the Electoral Commission has commenced in all polling stations across the country. Representatives of political parties were absent on the first day of the exercise as low turnouts were recorded. Those who have decided to partake in the exercise justify their reasons. <laughs> I don't even have time to go and check my name in the register because my work is more important to me. I will not earn any income when I go to check my name. I will not go and check my name in the register because those we will vote for do not care about us except their families. I don't care if my name is in the register or not. What I have decided on is final. The governing New Patriotic Party is promising to follow through with the construction of the Cape Coast Airport and another to be located at the Upper East Region with private sector support. This is despite an Auditor General report which declared already existing regional airport as not being financially viable. The prolonged absence of rainfall in the northern part of the country has sparked fears of potential food shortages as several hectares of farmlands have been already destroyed. Farmers whose lands have been prepared and waiting for the rains to plant are also devastated. I plowed three acres of land to plant maize. I couldn't plant because of the rain. And now even cassava and everything, there's nothing I can do. So day in, day out, I'm in the house. Because if you go to farm and you look at the plants, in fact, you feel worried. A 
After two months of staying out of the classroom, tutors in the colleges of education are to resume their services from Wednesday, August 21st. Leadership of the Colleges of Education Teachers Association of Ghana says they're trusting the assurances given to them by the Vice President, Dr. Baumia, to fulfill their demands by the end of October. For the respect we have for the office of the Vice President, I'm not sure we have called off. As we speak now, some of our members are not even happy that we have called off the action. We think that where we are now, if the Vice President has given us that uh, you know, assurance, and then he is standing surety for the fact that he stands to ensure that all the things are complied with. We can reference him. There's more news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. This is Ghana Tonight. And as always, we're very, very interactive. You can share your thoughts, views, comments, and opinions on the issues we're going to be talking about. But coming up next here on Ghana Tonight, where are the 2.3 million jobs created under this government as was forcefully put out by the flag bearer of the MPP, Dr. Mahmoud Obama, and in fact has been defended over the period by both the vice chair of the manifesto committee of the MPP, Kojo Ponkrumah, who is also works in house and minister. And this is not the first time the vice president has made this claim of some 2.3 million jobs. So stay with me here on Ghana tonight. I'm going to walk you through what has been happening at least over the last three years. Because the last time, in fact, the first time this claim of 2.3 million jobs been created by this administration was as far back as 2022 by the vice president. So the fundamental question we're asking is that Two years or three years on, from 2022 to 2024, the vice president is still talking and making reference to the same number of jobs created, 2.3 million. So between 2022 and 2024, no jobs were created. Is that a question that we have to put out as well? And, and, and then also, what's the data source? What's the source of this information that he puts out there? Because we have some people who have been doing some fact-checking, and stay with us. We're getting to that here on Ghana tonight. But first off, Let's listen to the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Obamia, at the launch of the MPP's manifesto over the weekend about the number of jobs that have been created. Take a look. Many economists and analysts have rightly stated that Ghana has turned the corner. But we know that for many families, the cost of living is still very high. The hardship is real, and we commit to doing more to relieve the difficulties Ghanaians are facing. We, e we are equally committed to creating more op job opportunities that will significantly reduce youth unemployment among the national population that has increased over 5 million in the last eight years alone. We have created so far 2.3 million jobs, the most of any government in the Fourth Republic. But youth unemployment remains a major concern and that confronts us. And we are committed to doing even more. So that's the vice president. 2.3 million jobs have been created by this administration. And in fact, if that figure is anything to go by, what the Ghana Sascar Service has been putting out should be different. 2.3 million jobs created should have at least a significant impact on the labor market survey that the Ghana Sascar Service conducted. That also paints another picture. So this 2.3 million jobs that the vice president talks about has been fact-checked by my good friends at Fact Check Ghana, Rabiu Alassan and likes, who, who question what is the source of the data that the vice president puts out. But in 2022, the first time the vice president made this claim of 2.3 million jobs, there was an Excel spreadsheet that he, he presented. And the data in that Excel spreadsheet has been reproduced. And then a number of media portals and this is where we got the information so this is it i want you to follow me closely this is what he put out there in 2022 the 2.3 million jobs at some point he said 
it was 2.1, excluding the NAPCO, and then also Plenty for Food and Jobs. Now, in 2017, according to the breakdown from Dr. Bamiya's spreadsheet that he put out, 413,540 jobs were created in 2017. And the sectors that these jobs were created are the Ghana Police Service, Prison Service, Fire Service, Ghana Immigration Service, they employed 3,500 in the year 2017. And the year, same year 2017, state-owned enterprises. State-owned enterprises, according to Dr. Mahmoud Bamiyan's spreadsheet, 171,079 jobs were created by these SOEs. And reference was made to the increase in SNIT data of contributors. And then the trade and industry and its ministry and its agencies, 31,171 jobs were created. And let me say that, that this is not according to the Ghana Saskal Service data. It is not coming from the SNIT, SNIT data for that matter. And also, uh, for instance, the Controller Accountant General's Department data. And we do know not all public servants are paid through the Controller Accountant General. So, yes, that's an outlier. But then again, this is what he gives us as a breakdown. And then if you look at 2018, Based on the claim they make, 373,708 jobs were created in 2018. The security agencies employed 3,500. State-owned enterprises, 188,385. And in 2018, the Trade and Industry Ministry and its agencies did not create any jobs, according to this statement by Dr. Baumia and then the spreadsheet he put out. But bear in mind, a number of these SOEs have been making losses for quite a while. And so then the question was, drill down this data for us so we know the specific state-owned enterprises that have made so much profit that they are able to employ so much. Because per what we do know, the SOEs are not doing too good, right? We didn't get that. Now, 2019, it says 615,169 jobs were created. And in 2019, the security agencies did not employ that's according to that spreadsheet he put out sometime in 2022. But the state-owned enterprises employed 180,258. And then the Trade and Industry Ministry and its agencies employed 153,422. That's according to the vice president. In 2020, during COVID, and, and, and take a look at this. During COVID, according to the breakdown by the vice president, 2.3 million jobs, 3,554 people were employed in the security agencies and the state-owned enterprises in 2020 during COVID employed. They, 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 they got new, new jobs for people. And the Trade and Industry Ministry and its agencies, 58,357. That was in 2020 during COVID. So then again, the question that you ask is then how much impact or damage did COVID make or have on the economy if when we were suffering as a result of the impact of COVID-19, which has been the reference point for, for the economic quagmire that we find ourselves in now today. During COVID, government was still creating new jobs, according to the breakdown by Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya. So COVID really did not have so much of an impact. That's a question. But then again, if you look at 2021, and we're going to get into that shortly and give you an idea of how much or how many jobs were created in 2021 per Dr. Mahmoud Baumia's breakdown. And bear in mind that within that same period, in 2021, specifically in October 2021, the former finance minister, Ken Oforiata, attended the UPSA graduation and he did state quite clearly that the government payroll is full. In fact, no public sector employment because the over 650,000 people who, who have been employed are on the government payroll. Government cannot continue to employ. This was in 2021. It was COVID. We we're preparing to go to the IMF. The government was, was broke at the time. This is what the finance minister said at that UPSC graduation. Take a look. Um, we have gone through a period where uh, most people um, look for jobs of government, etc. That payroll is full. I can tell you that because we are spending some 60% of our revenue on remunerating 
some 650,000 people, and that's not sustainable. That's the former finance minister. The government payroll is full. But then if you look at it, in that same year, we, we made some employment. In fact, we employed people into certain areas, according to the vice president. There's 2.3 million. If the argument is that these were replacements of existing vacancies, and so it wasn't really new jobs created, then does that fit into the argument of jobs created, as in new jobs created? Because I recall we asked this question, and the answer we got was that these employments that were made during the period that the, the finance minister announced that the government payroll is full, these were not new jobs. Well, those were people who had gone on retirement, some had died. And so was it really the case that it were just vacancies that were being filled, existing vacancies? Can that be classified as new jobs created? It's a question that we can also get answers to. But if you recall, in 2022, when the former finance minister, Ken Ofriata, was presenting the 2023 budget in November 2022, he did indicate that there was a freeze on government or public sector employment in the ensuing year 2023. I want you to take a look at this. A hiring freeze for civil and public servants. No new government agency shall be established in 2023. That's according to the vice president, the, the finance minister. So in all within this period, in fact, the, the vice president's 2.3 million jobs he talks about is between 2017 and 2022. So then, between 2022 and 2024, how many jobs have been created? Because this 2.3 million jobs the vice president talks about is within the first five years of this administration. They were able to create 2.3 million jobs. Then between 2022 and 2024 now, we want to know how many jobs have been created as well. You recall that the Labor and Employment Relations Minister, Ignaz Bafuewa, also made that claim that 5 million jobs had been created at some point. This was sometime last year. So the inconsistencies in the number of jobs created also raises a fundamental question. But bear in mind, all of this number of jobs created is not coming from the Ghana Sascal Service. And as we go on, I'll show you shortly what the Ghana Sascal Service has been saying about unemployment data. But this is where I bring in a data analyst who's been doing quite some work with me on this one to, to help us understand this breakdown. But let's take a listen to the Vice President again, okay? And then Alfred Tichy is going to be joining me. Take a look at what the Vice President said. Many economists and analysts have rightly stated that Ghana has turned the corner. But we know that for many families, the cost of living is still very high. The hardship is real, and we commit to doing more to relieve the difficulties Ghanaians are facing. We, if we are equally committed to creating more op job opportunities that will significantly reduce youth unemployment among the national population. That has increased over 5 million in the last eight years alone. We have created so far 2.3 million jobs, the most of any government in the Fourth Republic. But youth unemployment remains a major concern and that confronts us. And we are committed to doing even more. So that's what the Vice President claims. And if you look at this, in September 2022, Ignatius Bafoy, who Employment and Labor Relations Minister, quoted as saying government had created 5.3 million jobs. This was in September 2022. Then the vice president talks about 2.3 million jobs. So whose report should we believe? Is the vice president or the employment relations minister? Alfred Apia is a data analyst. 
has been crunching the numbers on this matter. Also a data scientist, also policy analyst joining us. Uh, Alfred, it's good to have you join us here on Ghana tonight. First of all, take a look at what is on the screen there, Alfred, and, 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 and what the Employment Relations Minister is talking about and what the Vice President has also put out there. But you've heard that, for instance, the, the Vice Chair of the Manifesto Committee of the MPP, Kujo Ponkuma, has been consistent in defending this position by, by the Vice President. How does that strike you? Oh, thank, thanks, Alfred, for having me. And I think, you know, it's interesting that the, the Vice Chair mentions the SNP data because actually one of the sources that I was going to use was SNP data to show that the SNP data does not match the data that they are talking about. Part of my issue is that um, we try to use different sources. So remember that this is government talking about its own source, government or the politicians are providing their own job numbers. But we also have publicly available information. So through the Ghana Stats Service, through the Controller and Accountant General, through the Ghana Revenue Authority, through tax data. So what I've been trying to do is to show, you know, could we really use those sources to, to be able to uh, say that the, the government has created 2.3 million jobs? So that's what I'm hoping to be able to show uh, here, that the, the really the point of deviation is that these numbers that the politicians are throwing around don't match up with the ones that we have from all the other public sources that we know. And I see, so, so the SNP data, as you have it, and as we're seeing, cannot support that claim of, of 2.3 million jobs created. Because the SNP data, and I'll show it. So the SNP data that they're using is basically when somebody registers on SNP, right? Um, and then it's assumed that the person is a new job that has been created. But what is important is not just people registering on SNP. What is important is to show that, you know, if the job is the job, the supposed job that has been created is sustainable, is that people are continuing to contribute to SNP. So SNP has another data called active contributors, right? And so that should be, if you look at, uh, the change in that, that's where you will see how many people are actively contributing to SNED. That will give you a better sense of the jobs rather than registration. Because remember, SNED has also been on campaigns trying to get people to register for SNED. So it could even be people that are already working that are signed up for, uh, for SNED. So, so if you go ahead and just use the SNED numbers, you are, you are thinking that you're creating jobs, but really you're also looking at people that are already have jobs and just signing up to register for SNED. And so, so here's what I want us to do, Alfred. So since the vice president made reference to data, and that's the data I've been, I've been put out now, and to put it on record that that data is from the Excel spreadsheet that the vice president put out. But then I want us to make specific reference to verifiable data that our viewers can also Google and look out for. For instance, the control and control digital data. If you have a GRA data, you can share with me. If also there is data from, for instance, SNET that you can share with me. And let's do a data-driven position or, or challenge of the vice president's position on this matter. Why do you think that that claim of 2.3 million jobs cannot be the case from where you sit? Sure. So I'm going to share my screen and then I can, I can show you. So um, like I mentioned, so the number that we've been told is 2.3 million jobs. So we're going to um, uh, we're going to look at that and try to use these different sources to see if we can get something close to that. Um, and from the way the messages that's been going around, they talk about public and private sector. So uh, they they specifically said they've excluded jobs created from planting for for food and jobs because you know obviously a lot of those jobs will be just in agriculture, so they exclude them. But the sources that I'm going to use today. Um, we have the Ghana Statistical Service data. Uh, we have data from the Controller and Accountant General Department. And uh, when this conversation started and people were citing the Controller and Accountant General Department, people were saying that some, you know, people, pro-government people were saying that the CAGD, CAGD doesn't uh, pay everybody. And so uh, there are some public service jobs that are that are outside of that. And that is true. But I would also show that even when you take into account the ones that are outside of the, the core uh, a public service, it still doesn't add up to the numbers that we are being told. I'll look, I'll also talk briefly about GRA data because again, the expectation is that if people are getting jobs and these jobs are, you know, you know, good jobs, they or good, at least good quality jobs, then we should be seeing some them paying taxes, right? That should be reflected in the revenue data as well. And then also SNET, which we talked about. So briefly, um, Two sources, because the Ghana Statistical Services uses surveys a lot for, for some of these stuff, right? And so in 2015, there was the labor force 
survey that was done. And in that survey, we found that the total number of employed people over that time frame was um, 9.2, 9, about 9.3 million people. Now, fast forward to 2022, we, the, we now have what is called the Annual Household um, Income and Employment Survey. And that one in 2022, um, it, was, it showed that about 11 million, about 10.96 million people were employed. So, and the reason I'm using 2022 instead of 2023 is because the, the number that the vice president has been saying, it's actually referring to 2022, from 2017 to 2022. So when you look at the breakdown that he gives, is from 2017 to 2022. So that's why I'm using 2020, so we can compare. Now, between those two time periods, the total jobs is 1.6 million uh, based on the start services data. But remember that this is all jobs, right? Be uh, and the, it, this is important because the Ghanaian economy is largely informal, right? And so a lot of the jobs are in the informal sector. But this one, this job group that I'm showing you over those two time periods is 1.6 million. It's all jobs, regardless of the level of formality. But the vice president was specifically referring to public and private sector, which will largely be four more jobs. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show is that, you know, the whole idea of the public and the private sector. So if you look at this screen, this is, again, this is data from the Ghana Start Service. Um, and what they do is they break down the jobs, right, number of employment by sector, right, by the specific sector. So you can see public into bracket government, uh, semi-public institutions, private formal. And I want to really focus on just the first three columns because the other part is like private informal. That is a lot of informal job. That is what, that's not what the vice president was talking about. And, uh, you know, people in agriculture and all of that would be in the private informal. But when you look at the public sector, you know, over the four quarters from in 2022, the average is about 690,000 jobs, right? And then when you look at the private formal, it's also around 940,000. Now, don't get confused because this is the total, this is us off, right? So it's not like this is just the jobs for 2022. This is anybody, people, I come to you, I ask you, are you employed? It doesn't matter what time you were, you were what time period you were employed, right? So this could be people that were working before this government came to power. This could be people that were working before 2017. And this could be people that are also in that period. But this is total. So even just looking at that, the number of people that are working in the public service, it's about 700,000. That is nowhere close to the 1.4 million that is being bundled around. Because even if, if we assume that everybody that's working right now is even working, it's, it's, it's a job that was created by the current government, that would not add up. And then the same thing, the private sector number, the nine, they say it's about 900,000, and here the average is 900,000. But again, remember that this is based on people that are working regardless of when they started working. So this doesn't add up to that number. So that is one source um, that I wanted to show. Then the other part is the controller and counter general department, because remember, they talk about public sector, right? So the public service, the way how it works is there are people that are paid by the controller, but there are also some organizations like the Ghana, Arm, Ghana Armed Forces, the Ghana Police Service, uh, they get a subvention from government to do their own payroll. So the government doesn't manage their, uh, the controller doesn't manage their payroll for them, but the controller will transfer money to them. And I, 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 my suspicion is that it has something to probably do with like security and all of that. So the, 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 the army and the police service, they manage their own, um, their own uh, payroll. So that is the, when you look at this, Table. That is the what the subvention is. But really, when even between the two, it's about eight hundred ninety thousand as of twenty twenty two, right? As of December twenty twenty two, and you would see that the mechanize or the people that have you know the government, they are it's about seven hundred thousand, which would be very similar to what we're seeing for from the staff service as also, also as of twenty twenty two. Also, one thing I should get, I wanted to mention is that even the subvention, the number is big because it also includes national service people, right? And technically, national service is not really employment if you if you if you want to look at the the the, the full the, you know like the definition of that, it's not really considered employment really. And so so that is the so you will see that between the controller and the Ghana Star Service, these numbers are far off. Like even the controller payroll, when we include the subvention, it's about 890,000. That is way, way less than the 1.4 million that the government is talking about. And even if we ask, this is also assuming that everybody that is to the controller payroll right now is em was employed by the current government, which doesn't add up because you know that people were working way before the government came, came, came to power. Um, so when, when I made this point, when others made this point, uh, the ruling party people said, well, controller doesn't pay everybody. There are also other ones. So I was like, okay, well, SIGA, 
um, the state interest and government, um, state's interest and government authority. They also do publish this, um, this uh, uh, state of, state of uh, um, public enterprise. Like they basically have these reports that they do, right? And so when you look at this chart, you see on the top, uh, on the bottom left corner, there's the number of employees by specified entities. So looking at state-owned enterprises, ECG, Cocoa Board, all those state enterprises, right? Uh, even this one even includes uh, the joint, what is called the joint uh, venture companies, like things like Airtel, Tigo, Telesel, those are all like, uh, it's a partnership between the government of Ghana and some private people, right? And so this, of all of that, their total staff strength is 68,000. Right. So that will not explain again, that will not explain the gap in the public service. So we keep asking the question, what numbers are, is the government relying on? Because these numbers from from government's own data, looking at all trying to cover all the bases doesn't add up. First, we can't even match the one point four million from public service before now, before then we can say, OK, what about the ones that were working before uh, before the current government um, uh, came to power? So we cannot really explain that. Um, tax data is the same thing. So, because if people are working, you should see that they'll be paying taxes. So, one of the exercises that I quickly did was um, I took the government's data from 2019 and then 2022 because I didn't have the tax data prior to 2017 and uh, right. I didn't have the tax data for 2017 and 2018. So, what I did was let's look at the difference between 2019 and 2022. Mm -hmm. How many tax how many additional tax payers have been added to the system right mm -hmm. so when i did that what i was saying was that about 40 percent of people uh, that are supposed to have been a part of this well uh cre jobs created by the government are not showing up on the tax tax and, system and, and so, that's a very instructive point that you make alfred uh, there because then if number of jobs have been created and we're not seeing that reflected on, on gra does that mean they are not paying taxes or the GRA's drive to get people paid taxes is also one that could be made, uh, reference could be made to that as well. But then I see that there's some inconsistency in the data, and I, you, I pointed that earlier. 5.3 million by the Minister for La, uh, Labor and Employment, and then the, the, the Vice President, 2.3 million. If we have to go by the Vice President's 2.3 million, just for the sake of this conversation, this was first made in 2022, as you have just uh, stated as well. So. Between then and now, is that to say that over the last almost three years, no jobs have been created? Yeah, no, that, that's a very good observation that you're making there because the 2.3 hasn't changed. It's always 2.3 million, right? Because it, so the vice president said 2.1, and then when he provided the data, the data actually showed it was 2.3. And so, um, yeah, good point. As for 2022, so 2023, no job has been created, basically. And then 2024 to date, to August, there hasn't been any, any jobs created. So that, that should put into perspective, you know, how these numbers are coming about. And, and we don't have any way of verifying it because, again, it's just an Excel spreadsheet that the vice president said. So what we can do is that we can look at all these other sources, right? All these other sources that should give us an idea of how the labor market is looking. And then we can compare and say that. Because you see, when I did the CAGD and the Ghana Star Service, they were close. They were close to each other. But when you look at the rest, it's like, no, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. That doesn't add up at all. So where are the jobs? And that's the question I keep asking. Where are the jobs that, are supposed to, that have supposedly been created by the current government? Where are the jobs? And I'm sure that's a fundamental question on the minds of many people because it was evident beyond reasonable doubt. I don't think there'll be any question of doubt per se. And to the extent that, Alfred, you keep consistently making the point that this is coming from the vice president's spreadsheet and not, for instance, the Ghana Fiscal Service will give us the number of jobs created or, or the rate of unemployment as well, as we have seen. Alfred, appreciate your time. And, and trust that, look, we, we're going to have a bigger platform to have an extensive conversation on this matter here on TV3. So, Alfred, I appreciate you for, for this work. Thank you so much uh, for joining us here on, on Ghana Tonight. Alfred Appiah is a data scientist and policy analyst joining us here on Ghana tonight. And this is a matter that we're going to continue having conversations on in our various platforms. But coming up next here on Ghana tonight, what are the fine details of the contract between the Ministry of Youth and Sports and the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation in respect of the All Africa Games? That's the question we're asking tonight because the games have been over for the number of months, gone. in fact, three months ago. And the matters never end. 
we're just getting to know this. This controversy of some $3.6 million was supposed to have been paid to the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation under a contract for the state broadcaster to be the official broadcaster for the All-Africa Games. Now, we shall come to the details of the contract later, but it is emerging during this public accounts committee sittings that GBC received only $105,000 of the said Three point over three million dollars paid, raising questions where the rest of the money went, or who is taking the rest of the money. Let's hear the sports minister when he appeared before the public accounts committee yesterday. Take a look. To cover the All Africa Games, right? Can you share with this committee how much that coverage? Was, was for and whether payment has been made for saying. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, GBC was the official broadcaster for the African Games, the 13th African Games, and I can confirm that full payment have made made to GBC. Do you, do, can you, do, you, do you have per chance what the amount was? I, do, I can't recollect the exact amount, but I know that it's in the excess of $3 million US, US dollars. You paid GBC yes. in excess of $3 million US dollars yes. Yes. for coverage of the All-Africa Games. Yes. Chairman, I think that I would rest here and maybe the next time GBC appears before us, because most of the technicians who worked on the All-Africa Games have still not been paid. And so we wanted to ascertain if you have paid and how much has been paid. Chairman, I'm grateful. Yeah, $3.6 million. That's according to the sports minister, has been paid to GBC. Well, the director general of the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation had this, he said he had been receiving so many calls from even the employees of GBC, who said, we received this amount of money. Well, he had calls to, to respond. Take a look. Well, I think yesterday I was one of those who were shocked to learn that the Minister of Youth and Sports said that they have paid GPC in excess of three million U.S. dollars. And I want to assure every Ghanaian and the public that GBC's total benefit from the African Games was 105,000 U.S. dollars equivalent. Nothing more was paid as a benefit to GBC. And that payment of 105,000 U.S. dollars was in, uh, was a support for the fact that we dedicated an entire channel, 24 hours. We suspended normal programming for the GTV Sports Plus and we dedicated it to the African Games. And for our role as the official broadcaster, that is what the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation was paid, and not in excess of three million U.S. dollars. Well, that's Professor Amin Al Hassan. There is the Director General of the State Broadcaster GBC. Let's bring in. Uh, Sadiq Adams is one of the celebrated sports journalists in this country. Um, we're going to have a conversation on this matter because hot on the plate coming through right now. Um, there's a statement from the sports ministry as well, which I'll show to you shortly. But Sadiq, if you can hear me, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Hello? We'll rectify that connection with uh, Sadiq Adams shortly. To have a conversation with him but this is what the gbc director general's letter states in fact after that interview that we just played to you there's a further clarification that came through in this letter that is important to clarify that gbc was the official broadcaster but not responsible for the technical production of the games the technical production was outsourced as gbc did not have the equipment to produce the games the following organizations for, were responsible for the technical production. PGS, Quality Media Productions SL, the production room. And then you have all of that. 
Okay, so Sadiq, appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Uh, we'll, we'll rectify that connection uh, shortly with Sadiq Obama. Hello, Sadiq, can you hear me? Okay, while well, 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 we are at it, uh, okay, you, 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 you cannot, you cannot, okay, so uh, we'll rectify that connection with Sadiq Adams uh, shortly to have a quick conversation on this. In fact, one of the major talking points uh, is why this even happened. This said 3.6 million, according to the sports minister, was said to have been paid to GBC, and the GBC is saying they received just uh, about 105,000. Sadiq, can you hear me now? Fortunately, we, we would continue to try and see how the, that connection to Sadiq Obama works out. But let's go back and hear exactly what the sports minister said at that public accounts committee hearing. Take a look. To cover the All-Africa Games, right? Can you share with this committee how much that coverage was was for and whether payment has been made for saying thank you so much yes uh, gbc was the official broadcaster for the african games to the 13th african games and i can confirm that full payment have made made to gbc do you do, can you do you do you have per chance what the amount was I, don't, I can't recollect the exact amount, but I know that it's in the excess of $3 million US U.S. dollars. You paid GBC yes. in excess of $3 million U.S. dollars yes. for yes. coverage of the All-Africa Games. Yes. Chairman, I think that I would rest here, and maybe the next time GBC appears before us, because most of the technicians who worked on the All-Africa Games have still not been paid. And so we wanted to ascertain if you have paid and how much has been paid. Chairman, I'm grateful. Well, so that's what happened again at the Public Accounts Committee hearing. Sadiq Adams, a sports journalist, is joining me. Sadiq, can you hear me? Yeah, good evening, Alfred. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. I mean, this is just a cocktail of surprises and, and a lot of shocks, is it not? I mean, after this, Africa Games... Not a good showing, obviously, but then again, we're hearing this latest one. 3.6 million, according to the sports minister, paid to GBC. GBC comes and says, we receive 105,000. The technical production, we didn't have the equipment to do so. It was outsourced. How does all of this play out for you? Well, very surprising uh, since morning. I think... Uh from last night, uh, the Public Accounts Committee sitting up to this morning when the claims were refuted by the Director General of GBC that they only received 105,000, and that's only 2%. But the Ministry of Sports has come out with a statement uh, detailing how much was paid and even to the extent of revealing the confidential contract that was signed between them and GBC on the 1st of uh, February 2023. That's exactly a month before the start of the African Games, uh, indicated that there was no broadcast right holder as at a month to the organization of the African Games. And 3.6 million was the total amount of money agreed uh, to be spent on coverage of the game. 3.5 of that has been paid. The, that's the cash component of it. And uh, out of the 3.5, almost 3.4 million uh, was spent to outsource bodies. Uh, that's uh, companies who were um, contracted by GBC because of their lack of capacity, obviously, to uh, do the production uh, for the broadcasting. So GBC's only payments as the mother uh, company that was the host, official broadcast uh, holder of the games, they only made hundred and. 5,000, which is 2% of the entire coverage amount, something that's uh, really uh, been of uh, surprise and startling to many GBC workers. Uh, all this came about because of the union workers of GBC uh, after hearing that GBC has been paid 3.5 million or $3 million by the ministry. 
have come in arms at the director general asking for them to be paid because they were paid a paltry hundred cities. The technicians and camera people were paid hundred cities a day for the entire coverage. And that's why they also came up asking how much GBs were, I mean, were paid for the coverage. So it's a whole, like you mentioned, is a, a, a huge conundrum which we need to ask why the broadcast right holding, uh, I mean, was paid, given to GBC, who did not capacity, and who are these third parties? Because there are two, three more companies that I have seen being paid who were not initially part of the arrangement. I see. That's, that's very interesting. Two, three companies that were not part of the arrangement initially, they've received some monies. That's another area we can get into. Contract was signed between um, Ministry and GBC, and there were no third parties. So that was the agreement between GBC and their third parties. But there are two or three more companies who have received payments, and this has been indicated in the, the Ministry's uh, recent statement. Yes. That's another third party, and that's beyond what GBC had indicated in the contract. Another third party were paid, and this was on the instruction of GBC. So beyond <laughs> GBC paying the, the original, um, I mean, outsourced bodies, the ministry indicates that GBC instructed them to pay other third parties. These are the other third parties who garnered around $1 million. So we need to ask mm. which um, institutions or bodies or third parties got $1 million from the production of the African Games who were initially not, not part not of part the arrangement. Of. Because they, 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 now, listed some three, they listed some three uh, companies. SBL, SB. Yes. It's very difficult to find out who are the owners of these companies. But of course, they have received payments by the ministry statement. Indeed. And that's the production room and so on. Those ones they mentioned. But there's a, a later statement from the from the Youth and Sports Ministry. Uh, Sadek, if you just stay with me and I'll read a bit of it to our viewers. They say, and this came through just about an hour ago before we got on air on Ghana tonight. They say that we wish to make the following statement to clarify a number of things. The Ministry of Youth and Sports through the local organizing committee received proposals from various stakeholders for the production and broadcasting rights for the 13 African Games. Some organizations submitted proposals in excess of $6 million, which the ministry deemed excessive. Also, the ministry, in its quest to build local capacity and leave a legacy after the 13 Africa Games, engaged GBC to become the official broadcaster. The other reason for the ministry's decision was that GBC's financial co quotation for production and transmission was the lowest, with the understanding that GBC will use the services of third parties to assist them implement their obligations. The total agreed amount was $3.6 So, So the ministry is, is so, sort of making the point that this whole decision to engage third parties was a sole decision of, of GBC. From what you do know, is that what, what, what the case is? Obviously, GBC, as we know, uh, doesn't have the capacity to produce um, an event of this nature. But the question is, there is a general knowledge that events of this nature are uh, uh, of intense um, competition among broadcasts uh, organizations like the AFCON, the Olympic Games, the, the African Games, like um, 54 countries competing. And the Minister of Youth and Sports has said at the floor of Parliament that they expect 2 billion uh, eyeballs, 2 billion audience for the African Games. So you would expect that just as it is with the AFCON and the other events, uh, media organizations will, will scramble right. to bid for the event. Right. Uh, this is the first time that I actually hear that you need to pay a media organization to broadcast. What we know is that the organization of such event comes with competition for the broadcast rights. So we need to understand if the African Games is such an attractive to the extent that you need to pay an organization or media uh, group to broadcast, then what is the essence? Because the Olympic Games, for instance, will attract mm. around five, six billion from one organization, and they are they are selling this right to around seven. But one organization will be paying paying seven billion for the broadcast right of the Olympic Games, and the African Games is Africa's own uh, concept of the Olympic Games. So you expect that even if the the amount will not be a quarter 
of the Olympic Games, it will not come as a loss to the states. There are media organizations who should have been interested in an event that will be attracting 2 billion audience. Right. But to the extent that we need to fork out money from the taxpayers, I mean, I, I mean, I mean back to cater for broadcast right, that, to me, uh, will have to be explained properly by the organizers, the African Games Committee and the ministry, right. that the whole event or competition that we organized is unattractive and we needed to right. give money to a media house to broadcast instead of the reverse, where media organizations circle around the event organizers in a bid mm. to be chosen uh, with huge sums of money Indeed. as a title holder or cast uh, holder of the event. These are things that are very, very uh, quite um, sketchy for me to understand. But then, like I said, we need to get to the bottom of it to know it. if we hosted the event and it was so unattractive to the extent that yeah. no media organization on the continent was ready. Uh, well, then was, it was, means... was actually ready. Certainly. And that's where the, 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 in fact, the germane questions you are asking, Sadiq, and we're going to certainly stay on this, the steam on this matter and get some more answers. Sadiq Adams is a sports journalist. That's a question about the cost of data and matters arising as a number of you have been sending us. That's going to be our focus on a festival check on tomorrow and also engaging our young voters on the issue of unemployment. All of that to look out for tomorrow here on Ghana Tonight. On behalf of the rest of the team, we do appreciate your time. My name is Alfred Okansi. Have a good night.